and then the next thing I know, there's blood all over the place. It's on my hands, it's in my pants. I don't know what the hell happened. Chet Barney. This was the first video that we released in 2019. It was interesting because a lot of times we just kind of meet up and mess around and shoot a bunch of silly videos. But this is one where we actually wrote a script for it. And it was a lot of fun to kind of just write out the jokes and, and prep them more than we used to in the past. There is actually one pretty funny story about Chet Barney. So Christian had this old neighbor from his old apartment who just hated us. He hated when we shot sketches and short films. And, and this particular night, he was very upset that we were making a lot of noise. And he, he banged on the door. And, and Christian and Brian were so scared of this guy at this point uh, that I took it upon myself. and was like, okay, guys, as the writer-producer, I'll go out there and I'll talk to this guy and, and get him to, to calm down a little bit. So I opened the door, I walked out there, and he was not happy. He was very upset with us. He didn't understand why we were making so much noise and talking about Blu-rays of all things. So I said, look, man, I get it. You know, I, I told him we're just trying to make a video for people and uh, try to make a few people laugh here and there, but if it's, if it's too loud, then we'll try to keep it down. And that wasn't enough for him. He was still very fired up, so I said, okay, look, I understand. And I just, I put my hand on his shoulder, I looked him right in the eyes, and he looked right back at me, and he stopped talking for a second. We had this moment of real connection for the first time that night. And I said, I get it. I understand. I'm here for you. And I pulled out my knife and I slit his throat. The Runner. The Runner was a really cool idea that Christian came up with. He wrote the script on his own, directed it on its own, and I was just kind of there as a supporting actor, you know, even though I was a producer on the, on the credit sheet, I just, I felt like I wasn't really involved in the, um, the creative process. And that hurt a bit. It hurt because I'm usually pretty hands-on with our shorts and um, I didn't take it the best way, I didn't take it very well. It even got to the point where our buddy Max, oh, sweet, sweet Max, he just played an extra. I don't even know if his character had a name, but it felt like he had more input on the story than I did, and I was quite upset about this. Now I remember it got so bad during the shoot that it actually pulled Christian aside, mid-take by the way, we were still rolling, I'm like, I gotta talk to this guy. And I pulled him aside and I said, I'm sorry if there was any miscommunication, you know, with what our roles are, but I'm in charge here. Okay, people click on the videos to see my face and I'm not in this nearly enough. And if that was a problem for Christian, I told him, I looked him dead in the eyes, I said, I will literally end your fucking life if you have a problem with this. So scared out of his goddamn mind, Christian profusely apologized and he actually let me ghost direct the rest of the shoot. And I think it turned out pretty well. I think I got some of the best parts on camera. So you're welcome. But that wasn't enough for me. You know, I was still pretty upset with how the earlier parts of the shoot went. So. During a break, I took Max aside and I wanted to clear the air a little bit and I, um, I apologized and said, he's a better actor than me. And he said, I know, I'm way better than you. And I was like, okay, hold on now. You're supposed to be apologizing too. We're supposed to both fake apologize to each other. So when he wasn't paying attention, I pushed him in front of a train. Duh. Uh, guess he's not here anymore. Who's the better actor now, Max? Hmm? Uber and Lyft. Fuck! Hey. Hey, shit fucker, the speed limit's 45 miles an hour, not 25 goddamn miles an hour. What a piece of shit. That looked like a sweet old lady. You look like a sweet old bitch! Uber and Lyft were a lot of fun. Brian played this sort of wacky Uber driver, and I was always his unwilling passenger. And it was funny, during this shoot, we actually hit a deer while we were filming. Uh, Brian was driving down Periwinkle Avenue, and uh, there was this deer in the middle of the road, and he was, you know, he's such a great guy, he was trying to swerve out of the way and not hit the deer. But uh, me, I wanted him to to hit it. So I, I, I leaned forward, I grabbed the wheel, and he was trying to fight for the wheel, and I was fighting for the wheel, and I, I went to his ear, and I was like, you need this. And then boom, we hit it right there. And like, it's not like the deer went flying over the windshield or anything like that. It was stuck underneath the bumper, wedged between that and the road. So it was more like a ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. We dragged that thing for like, I don't know, 50 miles or so, until there was literally nothing left of the deer. Like, it was pretty crazy. I'd never seen something disintegrate that quickly. Uh, really just, Man, fired me up. Yoga.
He's not walking. No. He's floating. Yeah. That's fucking weird. Yoga was uh, really wacky. Brian wrote this really funny character, and for me as an actor, you know, you want to be able to pick characters that kind of push you out of your comfort zone. And that's what I kind of found in the Pratyahara Samadhi Ahimsa. You know, I really wanted to try something new. And to get into this role, I really did a lot of drugs. I mean, you name it, I did it. You did meth, coke, acid, cryptocurrency, all of the above. You know, a lot of people think my character's transformation into the bird at the very end of the short was CGI, but it was actually practical. And I mean 100% practical. And not practical in the sense that like it was a prop bird. I mean that and I actually turned myself into a bird. Let me explain. I had consulted with many disgraced scientists, currently banished from their home countries, who really spent a lot of time studying the process of genetic modification. And after some blood, sweat, tears, and a bunch more blood, we were able to make the process actually work. And after the human to bird, bird to human process was all complete, I knew I had to still tie up a few loose ends. I mean, this is an illegal procedure after all. So I brought the scientists together for a nice celebratory dinner. We had a nice bottle of champagne, which I, of course, laced with cyanide, pesticide, diesel fuel, rock star energy drinks, and just a splash of lemon. I mean, I'm not a monster. So after just a couple of sips of what I'm calling the puddle of mud, they died very shortly after. I'm talking about within minutes. And then, boom, problem solved. Team's gone, roll's finished. Where's the Oscar? Teddy. So Teddy was our little sci-fi creature feature that we worked on. We had a lot of fun making it, and it was our first time really working in any sort of special effects range. And you know, the big money shot at the end is when Teddy bursts out of the cage and then bursts through Brian's chest, big ol' hole. It's, it's kind of the defining shot of the short. And you know, as a writer, director, actor, producer extraordinaire, I wanted to make that as practical as possible like I usually do. So I wanted to actually stab Brian through the chest. I wanted the actual hole in his chest. I wanted it to be as real as it possibly could. But he didn't really feel comfortable doing that for some reason. Apparently he didn't want to die or something like that. I don't know, pussy. So I caved and said, okay, Brian, we're not going to stab you in the chest, but I still want to stab somebody in the chest. So we looked online. We found a guy who looked just like Brian. Turns out his name was Brian too, but with a Y. And we decided that we were going to stab him in the chest. When I say we, I mean me, because I wanted to do the stabbing. I always do the stabbing. So I went to a nearby junkyard where I found this large metal pipe, which I sharpened myself, and then I took this blowtorch and I kind of just had it on there for at least 45 minutes to an hour straight. Wanted to get it as hot as it possibly could be, cut through flesh as effectively as possible. And when the time came, I just, I just stuck it right through Brian's chest. I mean, it went through like a, a knife through hot butter, man, just so easily. And it's, it looked beautiful on screen, and I, I think it might be like one of my greatest contributions to, um, to film, and uh, I'm sorry, I told, I told myself I wouldn't cry during this. I'm just, I was really proud of our team that day. And, and by team, of course, I just mean myself. Yeah. Guys, can we cut for a second? <laughs> real talk with the real Robbie. So tell us about Longshot, buddy. What was it about? It's a movie about a guy who gets a girl who's way out of his league. Oh, yeah. Something I can only dream of, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna die alone. <laughs> what? Working on Real Robbie was an incredible experience. I mean, I joined a cult in preparation for the role. It, it was great. I opened up my mind to different thoughts and experiences. I, I traveled the universe. I, I saw things that no human being should ever see. Uh, but I'm capable of it, so it's okay. Things did get a little dark for some of the rituals I had to do for the cold. I mean, I had to slaughter a couple of pigs, a few goats, many human beings, but uh, it was all worth it for the art in the end. You know, Robbie's just a guy. He's just a guy who likes movies and likes talking to people and maybe being into some weird shit, you know? So I connected with that as an actor, and I, um, I really would love to play the character again. I think it was an eye-opening experience for me. I mean, I learned so much not only about him, but about myself. You know, I was capable of new things after I shot this role. You know, I learned how to, how to talk to people better, how to be a better, better actor, and I learned how to levitate things. You may think that last one is a joke, but it's not, because watch this. Stage four.
effective immediately. I'm ordering a stage four lockdown at all respective. Stage four was wild, man. That was our infamous uh, one-shot take that we did. We must have done close to 30 takes for this, you know, and it, it, was, it was crazy but fulfilling at the same time because, you know, as an actor, it brought me back to the world of theater, you know, being able to just act out a scene with somebody, you know, back to my days on Broadway. You know, I wasn't in any plays on Broadway, but I've walked down Broadway and I've, I've seen some plays, not like them live, but I've seen signs for them. And it took me back to that, you know, with stage four. You know, one of the big questions that we get regarding stage four is how did you guys pull off the whole Brian coughing up the dark fluid effect? Jesus! You know me, I like to make things as real as they can be. So for about three weeks, I had been poisoning Brian pretty profusely. I had been liquefying a form of black mold that I had been forcing him to drink. So when it came to shoot day, you know, he was incredibly sick and he wanted to call out, but I grabbed him by the shoulders and I said, you're doing this for the art, man. And he said, okay, and he was more scared for his life than anything. But he showed up on set that day and that's what's most important. And he started coughing up some stuff. And after we got done filming, Brian actually had to stay a couple days in the hospital and he knew it was me that had poisoned him and caused him to almost die. And you know, he tried to tell the authorities, but uh, I got there first, you know, I talked to him, said, hey man, don't worry about this. We're gonna cover this up, everything's fine. We made a great short film. And he said, no, I want justice to be done for you almost killing me. So I was like, okay, don't worry about it, buddy. And I just took this pill and I was just like, shh. Shut the fuck up. It was kind of like that. So at this point in my career, you know, I've acted in about three short films, five sketches, and I've murdered 47, nope, 48 people. And I don't know what the future holds. You know, I'm always looking for the next big kill. I mean, next, uh, next project to, to take on. And, uh, you know, some people want to win Oscars, you know, or, or get worldwide recognition. You know, uh, for me right now, I kind of just want to not go to jail for murdering a bunch of people, but that's just me. That's how kind of I work as an actor, you know? So I'm just kind of playing it day by day, taking it kill by kill, trying to uh, just get by, and uh, I'm just going to be me. You know, be me. And you be you. You at home. Because I'm watching. I'm watching you. I'm always watching. All right, that was a fun shoot, guys. Thank you so much. Who am I, who am I giving this to? I'm gonna grab that. Oh yeah, sure. Later. There you go, buddy. There hey, you great go. job. Hey, thanks, man. Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, I got you. Oh, you got it, buddy. Yeah. We must have done this in close to 30 takes. It was exhausting, but you know, as an actor, it felt really fulfilling to do it that way. You know, it felt like theater. You know, taking me back to my old days at, you know, in, uh, in theater. And I. <laughs> <laughs>